everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Julia Oliverius, and do you want to know how you can create that classic look? You know, the one that's like, you know, the winged eyeliner or even just black eyeliner. It doesn't have to be winged. And that beautiful, bold red lip. Well, today I'm going to show you how to do that very quickly, very easily, full face style. So as you can see, I have zero makeup on so far. And so what we'll do is we'll get started. I'm going to take you through it step by step and let you know how you can create the same look. So first things first primer everywhere. Um, now today, because I'm going to do this classic look, I'm actually not going to do uh, a separate eyeshadow. I'm actually going to use my powder as my eyeshadow today. And um, so normally, if you've seen my other videos, I always do my eye makeup before my foundation. Uh, and I do that for two reasons, because it gives uh, an opportunity for the primer to set. Now that's not a requirement for using primer, but hey, if you've got a couple extra minutes, great. Um, but the, the more important part is that if you put your eyeshadow on before you do your foundation, should you get any eyeshadow fallout, then you don't have to worry about it getting you know under your eyes and messing up your foundation. So it's really, really cool for that. So, I've got my primer on everywhere. Now, what's cool about this particular one that I use, um, if you have any leftover on your fingers, one place you can use it is on your lips. So, you know, priming your lips before applying, you know, any sort of uh, lipstick or gloss, totally fine. And this particular one I can even use uh, in my hair to kind of help calm any frizzies, which is pretty cool. So, uh, but for those of you that don't use primer, I definitely recommend it because it's going to help fill in any fine lines, wrinkles, help smooth out your skin tone so that when you do go to apply your um, foundation, whether it's a powder or a liquid, whatever, it just helps everything go on smoother because you've kind of already filled in any little divots or, you know, fine lines. Um, same for your eyeshadow. Um, you know, it can help prevent creasing, you know, right in here where you get maybe some creasing from your eyeshadow. It's going to help the color stay in place and make it really blendable. So lots of reasons to be using a primer. Um, I absolutely do not wear my makeup without it anymore. So... Okay, so like I said, so today I'm actually going to be using powder and I'm going to use it all over my face. Now, I don't normally just wear straight up powder, um, but I thought to myself yesterday when I was getting ready to do a tutorial uh, and I, I did just powder because I had run club last night and it was raining for the whole time we ran. Um, I thought to myself, you know what, the only reason I'm putting foundation on is because I'm going to do this tutorial beforehand, and um, I just I want something light. So, like I said, I hardly ever wear powder, but then I remembered as I was using this how much I like this powder. It gives such good coverage. So, let me get this on. Now, I'm just using the little applicator pad that came with it because I do want the coverage to be a little... Um, heavier, I guess I would say, you just give better coverage. If you just want light coverage with your powder, um, all you need to do is just use a brush that, and, and apply it that way. Or if you're ever using it to just kind of dust over maybe a cream foundation or a, like a BB cream, that'll help. Uh, so just some little tips there for using a powder foundation because I, I don't do it very often, but I do realize that a lot of the people that watch my tutorials and a lot of the clients that I work with like to use just powder, you know, and nothing else. So I thought, oh, hey, maybe I'll just do that today. And two, you, then you guys can see the kind of coverage that you get out of this powder. So I really do like it a lot. And especially putting it on over primer, it really just smooths out your skin tone, gives some nice coverage, and it doesn't show flakiness because you've primed and I moisturize and I exfoliate and I have a whole little routine that I do. But that makes a huge difference because one thing to know is that um, especially during the winter months when your skin is a bit more dry, powder is going to make that dryness stand out, hands down. So that's why normally in the winter um, I use a BB cream or cream foundation, something with that dewy finish. So I'm just double checking to make sure I've got this um, spread all over here all right good so because I did this 
to create my classic look as opposed to doing any sort of eyeshadow to enhance it. Um, now what I'm going to do is apply the eyeliner. So I'm going to be using a liquid eyeliner today. So my tips for using liquid eyeliner, um, first of all, get yourself one that is the dip style, um, the dip and draw, because uh, then you can really control very well how much of the eyeliner you have on here. Um, I've used the pens, you know, just like what literally looks like a pen, um, and I don't care for those near as much because I felt like the tip dried out too fast and it made it um, harder to, to fill in. Hey, Zach! <laughs> I'll get you some powder. <laughs> That's my friend Zach popping on. He's silly. All right. So like I said, we're just going to do um, just a classic eyeliner. And what you want to do, remember when you're applying eyeliner, uh, at least as a preference or as a, a guideline for you, keep it thin in here. And as you come out here, and especially where your eyelid starts to turn down, then that's where you can kind of start making it thicker as opposed to keeping it thin all the way across. Just helps give a little bit more dimension, um, a little more depth to your eye. It looks, it looks really nice and anybody can do it that way. So I will just apply this real quick. I'll try to do this so you guys can see it. Um, other tips, just keep it really small strokes. That will help you um, have good control over it. So what I really like about this one is that you can see how light that goes on at first. So if you ever wanted just a really light coat, you could totally do it with this stuff. But once this dries, then you can come back over and layer it a little bit and just keep making it darker and darker and darker. So uh, let me get a little more on here and I'll do the other eye. And then I'm just going to kind of flip back and forth between the two a little bit and, um, sorry, and just kind of keep layering that up. You guys see this okay? So again, um, my suggestion when using liquid eyeliner, I know it can be scary. Um, I didn't try it until about a year ago, roughly, because I was I was nervous to use it, hands down. Um, just scared me. Um, I was afraid it was going to be so messy and everything. And really, I mean, as you can see, it's not. So just take your time. Don't be in a hurry when you do it. And just use really small strokes, like I said, because that will really help you out a ton. All right, let's add some more here. Now back to the other side. Hey, Michelle and Stephanie, thank you for tuning in. You guys, feel free to hop on and say hi when you get here. Let me know where you're tuning in from or what you're up to this afternoon. Um, Stephanie, I know she's over across the river from me. And I saw a post on Facebook that she was getting some snow. We've only had flurries over here, really. I don't have anything that's accumulated even a little bit. It, it's hit the ground and it, it left. <laughs> so, okay. So notice, like I said, let me just add a little more here. So notice, see, it's, it's thinner in here and then it gets thicker as it goes out and that's right about the point where your eyelashes or your eyelashes and your eyelid start turning down so that's just kind of your guideline for you um also essentially that also should line up just about the same part where your eyebrows arch just a little uh symmetry for you when you're <laughs> putting your makeup together or you're having your brows shaped or anything like that that's kind of how all that lines up and that's how um, some people just look like they've really got it together. That's, that's, that's a little secret for you guys. Okay, so let's just get this side done here. So notice I'm just almost laying this brush, um, or tip, whatever you want to call it. It's not a brush, it's a felt tip, on its side and just tapping that on. And that really just helps, like I said, just give me really good control over it without making some giant liquid eyeliner mess. All right, so that is it for us. Like Kiara, did I say that right, Kiara? Uh, she's in Louisville, lots of ice and a little snow. Well, be careful. Um, I joke being from the Midwest, being from Illinois, um, and then living in Nebraska before moving here, that Southerners cannot drive in the snow. Um, 
and, and the cans. But the, the truth of the matter is, a lot of it is ice. And nobody can drive on ice. I don't care how big your truck is, okay? You can't drive on ice. So if you're where it's icy, be careful and stay home if you can. All right. So next up, let's. Uh, I'm just going to do just a quick one layer on each eye um, mascara because most of you know how to apply mascara. But my, my tips for this here are, see how you get that all the way down there by the base? Get that as close as you can and then wiggle it like swirl it see like in a circle and then wiggle up call it the swirl and wiggle folks i always joke that that could be a dance move maybe it is i don't know if anyone would care to demonstrate what a swirl and wiggle dance move would look like i'd love to see that all right so but the point of that is a lot of people i find are only applying the mascara just on their tips here and the problem with that is you're not getting the full effect of the mascara and then you wonder why your mascara sucks <laughs> and some of it may be that yes you could use a better brand um that it's going to give you better results but the other part of it is is that if you're not really applying it fully to your lashes then you are missing out on the benefits of mascara and you know mascara for me is a staple um, I don't wear makeup without it it looks weird uh, it looks incomplete if you don't wear mascara with the rest of your makeup so um, it really just helps bring out your eyes so definitely pop some mascara on all right okay so we're gonna go right down here too so like I said if you had more time and you wanted to do something more with the eyeshadow aspect of this look you certainly could, but for keeping, you know, kind of it quick and easy, just use your foundation as your eyeshadow for this look. Because all you're going to end up doing is popping on some really bright red lipstick here in a minute. And that's where, that's where you're going to draw your, your attention is there. So, okay, so next I like to do brows. So, we'll just do these real quick. Brush them out first. That's what I love about this um, brow stuff is there's this is on one end and then of course you've got the pencil on the other. So just fill these in real quick. And just notice that I'm just using like really small strokes. Um, and I've been working on my eyebrows for months now, literally. Um, because just from years and years and years of over tweezing and so it's still you know it's still a work in progress but gosh they sure are much better than they were um, you know a few months ago good grief but filling them in is good because it really I mean really just helps you shape them out so I always tell people first go somewhere and have them professionally shaped like that was my problem, is that I was trying to do it myself, and um, clearly that did not end up in my favor. I mean, for and for years I tried doing that, so not just like recently. Recently, I've been going and getting them taken care of by somebody who knows what they're doing. All right, but the key to it really is just light strokes. So just take a quick look at the difference here. You know what filling in your brows can do versus not filling them in it really just helps round out the look draws more attention to your eyes um, and really just helps frame that whole eye area so just a quick brow fill in can really make a difference um, and i will say and and you know think about people who are older so maybe like your grandma for example um she may not have a lot of eyebrows right or maybe they're extremely, extremely light. So if you're somebody with very thin brows or extremely light eyebrows, I highly recommend that you fill them in um, just with like a light blonde shade because what happens when you don't, it really ages you. Uh, when you've got such light brows, um, it really causes you to look several years older than you are. Um, I have one of my friends and she fills hers in now, um, but she was so unsure about doing it, wasn't sure how to do it. And I taught her how to do it and really just following her natural line. But um, 
it, it made a huge, huge difference. And she was so happy because for years she had struggled with it because her, her brows are basically white. And so it was really hard for her. It definitely aged her, you know. She'd have all her other makeup done and it was literally like she had no eyebrows. And um, so now she fills them in and it looks spectacular on her. So I'm so proud of her for trusting me and, oops, um, trusting me and letting me show her how to do that. All right. Good enough for the brows. All right. Do, do, do. Hey, Melissa. Hey, Macy. Okay, so next step, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to put on some blush. Now, what I like to do is, especially this time of year, this was one of the trends. If you saw my blog posts about the nine fall and winter trends for this year, um, one of them was to take your blush color, um, maybe one that's even a smidge lighter than you normally wear, and kind of over apply it. Don't get too crazy, but over apply it a little bit. And kind of give yourself that whole like, ooh, I've been out in the cold and I just came in look, you know? Uh, because I, I don't know about you, but if I ever go out in the cold and then I come in and I look at the mirror, I'm always kind of like, oh, I kind of like my rosy cheeks. Um, you can create that same look just by doing this. So what I want you to notice is what you want to do. Smile. Boop. That's right where you're putting your, your blush. Okay. Do not take it all the way back here. You're keeping it right on the apples of your cheeks. And really, I would recommend that you really don't bring it out much further than your brow, okay? So there's all these little cues for you along the way as you're doing your makeup and how to line things up. You know, you've got, like I mentioned earlier, you've got the downturn of your eyelid. That should be right about even with the arch of your eyebrow. Your blush shouldn't come out more than right about here. Because in this whole space back in here is where you can put your blusher or your bronzer, excuse me. So what I want you to do, just keep the blush right in this area. We'll blend it here in a minute, um, but this will give you an idea where he was. <laughs> I was just reading what Melissa said. She said, Kyle asked me one time what I was smiling at. You just say, I'm smiling at myself. Hello, trying to do my makeup. Um, yeah, that's what you gotta do, smile. It just, that's the little apples of your cheeks are right there, and that's where you wanna put that color. So next, because it's winter and clearly I do not have a tan, I'm using, um, and I dropped that the other day, so let's not let that fall out, but just a really light bronzer. Um, and so what you're gonna do for that is right here, basically where that color has stopped, you're gonna apply this. So what I recommend is taking, for example, so going back to the blush real quick, really focusing on applying it here, okay? It, don't eat don't even bring it back here like oh I got to bring it back to this imaginary line don't all I want you to do is just flick it back so just keep going over that same little spot and flick that color back and it's going to naturally just flick back a little bit that way when you go to apply the bronzer you don't have a harsh color right here like you do you know or a more bold color right here it's just nice and light right here see and then it can transition very nicely into your bronzer color without being weird or over blending or under blending. So, um, so just a little tip for you guys for, for applying the blush and how to get that nice soft fade one shade to the next. Okay. Then what you can do, um, is take a blending brush. Now I love to use, um, this setting powder because it's basically like, a Snapchat filter for your face. It really just smooths out everything so much. You don't need a whole lot. Um, and you just apply it personally. Uh, in this case, I'm only applying it around the outside here where I want it to blend. Um, but should you ever, I mean, you can even just tell the difference here from this side. Uh, but should you ever have an instance where you've applied too much blush or too much eyeshadow or anything, and you just can't blend it out, Translucent setting powder is, and, and this one is like the best, <laughs> um, but I love it and it is a total like makeup saver if you've screwed up and put too much on and you just cannot blend it down anymore. This stuff is amazing. But like I said, I'm just applying it kind of around the outsides here because I want to keep that little pop of color, but I don't want it to be as bold down in here. 
Okay. So then what I'm going to do is um, we're going to do just a little bit of contour. Yeah, we're going to do a little contour. I wasn't planning to do that, but I think I'm changing my mind about that. So <laughs> we're going to do that. So quick tip for your contour color. So what you want to do when you're contouring, do not do this. You don't want to do that. Okay. That's not the right spot. What you want to do, actually, is you're going to start back here by, uh, I don't know, this little piece of your ear, your ear flap. I don't know what's it called. Um, but you, what I want you to do is feel where your, your jaw is right here. And then you got, like, you know, your teeth are right here. Keep feeling, feeling, feeling. Oop. And then where it goes in further, right under that cheekbone, that's where you're going to apply your contour color. And then you can bring it back from there. But if you apply it like fishy style, it's too low. It's now down here instead of up here, and it makes your face look droopy. So keep that contour color up in here. So right in there. So I'll apply that a little heavier just so you guys can see where I'm putting it and then I'll blend it. See? So Fishy would have me down here and I'm actually doing it up here. And that's matching right up with your, your blush and you don't want to bring it in again. We've got little like cues for you. Don't bring it in past about the middle of your pupil slash the start down slope of your eye slash the arch of your eyebrow. Keep it out here, okay? I'm not saying that if you do it the other way, it's wrong, because God knows I did it that way for a very long time. It's just this is a more flattering way for you to do it. And I'm super excited, see? Above the fish. Right up in that little hole. <laughs> so, but I am super excited because today... Um, finishing up some edits on a video that I did. It's, um, it's, I'm going to do it as like a class. Um, it'll be free and it'll be online, but, um, it's going to teach you guys all sorts of makeup application techniques that you can use to create a more flattering look. And these little tips are going to be in it. So if you want more info, um, like I said, it's being edited today and should be done today. If you want more info on that, just drop, um, like hashtag class down below and I'll let you know when it comes out but I should have that ready for you guys next week okay so again I'm just gonna blend that a little bit so everybody always wants to know how Adele gets her contour so freaking good right it's because her makeup artist or maybe it's her whoever does it is applying it here and not here okay so that's what that looks like all right, so I think we're done with all of the, the, the rest of the face stuff. So now for the super exciting, cool technology part. Um, I really enjoy technology. I enjoy those kind of things. Um, and so this is my new technology piece that I've been playing with this week. And um, it is a new, um, it's a lipstick powder and or powder lipstick whatever you want to say and I had never even heard of something like this before until just a couple weeks ago and I had to order some because I was intrigued uh, to say the least so uh, I did a tutorial video with packed with lots of tips on Tuesday so if you guys have questions you can always scroll back in the news feed and find it or if you have questions and you just want me to send you the blog post with the tips for using these just do hashtag blog in the comments and I will send that to you um, because then it's just easier for you guys to find so hey Sarah hey Julie thank you so much all right, so what I like to do for these is I tap it off before I pull it all the way out um, because uh, I find that if you try to do it here and then tap on the side, it, it's a little, I guess, you, I mean, it's a little messy. Like, you'll get it around the edge. So I just kind of go, like, back and forth, like, in here. So, but what's, if you haven't seen any of the other tutorials I've done yet for this, this is a powder. And so what you want to do is... Um, don't inhale when you apply it. And I won't run through all the tips right now, um, but like I said, if you want the blog, just let me know. But 
what you do is you you want to dab it on is how I have found it to be most effective. Now some people probably swipe these on. However, I find that you can really pack that color in and get a really good solid makeup look if you dab this on. So um, let me show you what that looks like. Hey Kaylee. All right. So the first tip is to start at a point here at your cupid's bow and make an X and then work your way out from there. See, so you've got yourself a little X. So that really helps you kind of start to create a really nice uh, point. Um, and here's the other thing that I think is super cool. Once the powder starts turning to the gel, it feels warm on your lips. It's not like tingly or burny or anything like that. It's just, it's a warm sensation. So it's kind of cool. Um, okay, so let's finish this out here. Now the other part about these I really like is the tip on here. You can really use very easily to line your lips, which is really, really cool. Um, although I would still, um, for some people, recommend a liner. I'm not using one today, but I did the other day and I really liked it. Um, but you can also just use a tip. I think what I'm finding is if you do want to use more of a swiping motion to apply it, do it slow and kind of let that powder turn to a gel as you're going. That'll make it a little bit easier for you. Isn't this pretty though? I love it. Oh, all right, I guess it's right in the middle here. Ta-da! That's it. I love it. I absolutely love it. Um, the cool thing about it is it's got kind of a, I don't know if you guys can see that, kind of a, like a, it, it's a matte. It's not a shine at all. It almost has like a little iridescent finish over the top, which I think is super cool. So, just to recap for you guys, so you've got your kind of classic look, right? You've got your porcelain skin with, uh, you know, we used powder today for coverage. And then you've got, you know, just your cheeks with some nice contour put in, your brows, a simple black eyeliner. Although what would be really fun to play up with the red to kind of give it a more modern pop would be to do a purple eyeliner because purple and red are contrasting colors to each other. So that would be really fun if you wanted to give this look a modern twist. Um, and then of course we finished it off with a nice red lip. So what I love about the red lip is that I really feel anybody can do it. I know a lot of people are nervous because I think that they think it's it's too bold, it's too much, you know, I just should stick with neutrals, but really, red is good. Red is a power of color, gives you a little boost of confidence, makes you feel a little sassy. I like it a lot. Um, I think that it's completely appropriate for the workplace, for the gym, for running around town, for going out, for however you want to wear it. But I definitely, definitely encourage you guys to give it a try. <laughs> so if you have questions, let me know. Like I said, if you want to know more about the free class that I'm um, editing the video for, uh, just drop a hashtag class below. And if you want the blog for the tips for using powder lipsticks, just do hashtag blog below and I'll get that over to you. All right, talk to you later. Bye.